Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the ACW Newscast. I am Hakeem Johnson, your ACW commentator as always, and welcome to another edition of the Newscast. Thank you for joining me on this new episode here. It's been a while. I think I'd say it's been about almost a month. About a month, but I feel like it was necessary to do a new episode right here and right there as we are getting oh so close to Animania 4 and close to the end of this season for ACW, which has been a very, very interesting uh, season to say the least. Um, we're going to be talking about some ACW stuff. Um, we're going to talk about pro wrestling and we're going to go through your questions and comments. So to start things off, let's talk about some pro wrestling, if you will. And we have to talk about the biggest news to come out of um, wrestling currently going on, and that's on the WWE front, as WWE World Heavyweight Champion, or former WWE World Heavyweight Champion Seth Rollins, has been injured. He suffered a torn ACL and or MCL injury, and he is expected to be out for six to nine months. Now, this is a question, first of all, that you all asked me on the newscast, so I might as well address it right now, but... Um, yeah, Seth Rollins is out for six to nine months, so basically he's going to miss a full year. I understand there's estimates about the, um, the window of how long he's going to be injured, but I have a bet that if he's going to be fully healthy or somewhat fully healthy, it'll pretty much take a whole year. So therefore, Seth Rollins is going to be missing WrestleMania 32, and clearly he is going to be no longer the champion as a new uh, WWE World Heavyweight Champion will be crowned through a tournament um, at the Survivor Series in just a few short weeks. Now, I'm sure all of you heard that news and thought, gee, I must be in 1998, or I must be hearing some Deadly Games brooming through, because it's starting to sound like we're going to get a Deadly Games tournament for the Survivor Series this year, and a lot of people are questioning and figuring out who is going to walk out with the title at the end of the night. So, a lot to talk about the injury itself of Seth Rollins and the implications of what it means now that Rollins is out. So, let's talk about it. There are some pros and some cons that go with this. Now, I don't mean it in the sense that it's good that Seth Rollins is injured. I mean... I need to address this now because I've been seeing this somewhat through certain wrestling circles, but um, just because I was critical of Seth Rollins' title reign and his character does not mean I wish ill of the man or that I am happy that he is injured, because I am not. Um, I like Seth. Um, I hope Seth recovers fully and he is able to come back stronger than ever, although a lot of athletes will tell you if you suffer a torn ACL or MCL, you're really never the same athlete no matter how much surgery or rehab you go through to recover. But with that being said, um, hopefully Seth is able to recover. He's deserved this um, time off, although although it's kind of under circumstances he doesn't want to be a part of, but he's deserved the time off. He's been putting on some stellar matches as champion or without champion. He's been, he's been putting on a show. He's been the uh, center of the uh, product, which has a lot of implications there as well. But I just wanted to wish Seth my uh, well wishes, and hopefully he is able to recover. But let's talk about the implications. Let's talk about the pros and cons here. Now, let's talk about some pros here to start off. Rule number one, pro number one, actually, the title's off Rollins. I'm sorry. I know some people are going to try now now because Seth Rollins is injured, and I know um, people are going to try to use revisionist, revisionist history and try to praise Seth Rollins' title reign, saying it wasn't that bad. No, it was that bad. Um, it, this injury does not change the fact that Seth Rollins' title reign was mediocre at best and atrocious at worst. Um, it's not, this, this does not change the fact that Seth Rollins as a heel, honestly, for the majority, was unbelievable and that people just c- could not buy Seth Rollins as a credible top champion heel, at least not with me. Um, they, had to take the, they had to take the title off Rollins. Um, this week's Raw did low in the ratings yet again, placed number four in the um, network um, list, if you will. Um, 
the Monday Night Raw was placed, I believe, in a 2.3 rating. That third hour is killing that show. And that third hour has been a consistent ratings killer, I think, pretty much since the three-hour Raws were initiated. People are just tired of the same formatting, and they're tired of the same programming, and they're tired of the same structure that Raw runs to the point where they, by the time they get to the third hour, you may have something in the third hour, but the audience will not be reluctant to stay because they already are tired of the filler that they had to go through just to watch what you wanted them to watch in the first place that you set up in the first segment of the show. So that's why your that's why your audiences are is dwindling. Because that third hour is constantly killing the quality and the show itself. I understand that you had to have the third hour because of your corporate sponsors and advertising money and, you know, your Mattel's here and your charities here. And I get that. I understand this was all a money grab for you to add a third hour. But you have to understand you do not have the creative talent you don't have the production skills in my opinion at this point and you don't even have the patience to tell a story to be able to warrant a three hour show on Monday nights every damn week it's not only tiring but it's tedious redundant and stale so you know, Rollins, when he won the title at WrestleMania 31 this year, it had a lot of promise. I mean, you had a new, young, future talent that was money in the bank, you know, briefcase holder, and he cashed in in the biggest stage of them all, defeating Roman Reigns and Brock Lesnar. And there was nothing wrong with it. He was made that night. And don't get me wrong, he is going to be made now from this point on. He's going to be one of the future players going into the WWE in the future, but... It was the way you executed the title reign. The title reign showed potential. The title reign showed promise. But the execution was off. It's one thing to have a heel be a chicken shit. It's another thing to have him be a chicken shit for every opportunity that he got. Seth Rollins is booked as a wrong type of heel. If you wanted Seth Rollins to follow the footsteps of Triple H and be somewhat of his predecessor... You should have had him a smart, conniving heel, basically. Like a cerebral assassin, if you will. If you really wanted to push Seth Rollins as this type of heel, that yes, he could back away from fights, but when he knows the situation at hand, he will fight because it benefits him in the end. That's the type of heel Seth Rollins should have been. But no, it was every week, whether it was Randy Orton or Dean Ambrose or Roman Reigns or Brock Lesnar or Sting or anybody else, John Cena, Seth Rollins just ran. He ran away from the fight, and as a top heel champion, you can't force yourself to do that. And I know people are going to pull out saying, well, didn't Edge do it? Didn't Triple H do it? Okay, big difference here. First of all, you're comparing Seth Rollins to an Edge or a Triple H that had more experience at the top and were more proven commodities to be able to be trustworthy, to be able to be a heel champion. Second of all, Triple H, yes, he had his moments where he cowered, but he was also a legitimate top superstar at that point where, he, where him being able to take on a Stone Cold or a Rock was believable. Edge... Yes, when he first started out, he was being a coward conniving heel. But he was able to convince others that doubted him in his first title reign as a heel world champion that he can go against a John Cena, he can go against a CM Punk, he can go against an Undertaker. Seth Rollins was never given that chance, opportunity, or even story to prove that he can go toe-to-toe with a Roman Reigns. He can go toe-to-toe with a Randy Orton. He can go toe-to-toe with a Sting, John Cena, Brock Lesnar. The rest goes on and on and on. So, Rollins losing the title is a good thing. Not because of the injury. That's not the good thing. The good thing is that Rollins is no longer champion. They needed to do it. I mean, how bad do you want these ratings to go at these point? at this point? How bad do you want this product to become more mediocre? Now, that's another thing that people need to also understand. Just because Seth Rollins is now no longer champion does not fix the current situation of the product. The product is still poor. Seth Rollins as champion was just 
a part of it. And yes, maybe even a major part of it, but it wasn't the sole purpose as to why the ratings are down in the dumps as they are right now. When you have a Monday Night Raw bringing in all the legends like Austin and HBK and The Undertaker and Brock Lesnar, and you still are able to draw a 2.3, 2.2 rating, it's, it, digs, it digs deeper than that. Now, people are going to come up here and say, who should be champion? Some people are going to point and say, well, Dean Ambrose should be champion. Listen, guys, I love Dean Ambrose. I think Dean Ambrose's character is one of the more intriguing characters in the product today. One of the few characters that people actually give a shit about. But the way they have booked Dean Ambrose, the way they have told his story with his character as of late, there is no way anyone's buying Dean Ambrose as a credible WWE World Heavyweight Champion. There's no way. He couldn't be Bray Wyatt. He couldn't beat Seth Rollins. You know, he couldn't beat Kevin Owens. Well, he's probably going to feud with Kevin Owens now, but again, that's my whole point. That whole feud with Ambrose and Owens that is being rumored, there's no there's no there's a no win situation. Ambrose needs a win here, but at Owens' expense. Owens needs a win here to be champion, but at Ambrose's expense. There is no gimme here in that feud. So Dean Ambrose as a WWE World Heavyweight Champion, yeah, you may love the guy, and I love him too, but people need to understand, and, for, and people forget that we are just a loud minority. We're not the majority, and the majority, as much as they love Dean Ambrose, that doesn't mean they'll buy him as champion, and I don't think they will. There hasn't been any buildup or any direction or any momentum or any fire for Dean Ambrose to be champion. I'm sorry. There hasn't been. So, I don't, and, I, and, and that, and I don't want to see Dean Ambrose get, um, Hijacked. I don't want to see Dean Ambrose's whole path or character become completely undercut because he's champion and the company will blame everything on Dean Ambrose. I don't want to see that what they did with Seth Rollins. So as much as people want to see Ambrose as champion, you got to think the bigger picture. You got to be a realist here. Ambrose is not going to be the champion. Then you got Ryback. Again, Ryback, one of the more consistent wrestlers out there that gets a legit reaction. People can hate on Ryback all they want at this point. Quite honestly, Ryback has improved in shades compared to two years ago. And Ryback, even though when he went through a shitty heel run and was pretty much swimming in prerogatory, he has able he has been able to come back as a face and garner one of the strongest reactions every week from the crowd. So... Ryback would look like a feasible contender, but I still think people haven't fully gotten through Ryback's whole sabotage. You know, when he went through that whole thing with the Shield and CM Punk and then Cena, obviously, then he turned heel. I don't think people have fully, truly accepted Ryback as a credible, legitimate threat. And and, 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 I, and that's not to say that he can't be one day, but I don't think that day is now. I think Ryback, I think Ryback just needs a little bit more push. I think Ryback just needs to be at a, on a steady course as he is right now. Don't push him too high, but don't push him back down or do anything stupid with him. Just kind of let him build himself up organically like he's been doing as of late, and then let the crowd kind of decide if they fully want Ryback to be that guy. Again, I heard Ryback um, on a recent interview pretty much said that he could be the next Cena if Vince and the WWE gave him the ball. And I do believe that Ryback can do it if he was motivated. And I think Ryback cares enough to be motivated to do so. But I don't think the crowd has fully accepted him back to be that replacement. So, as much as I think Ryback could be a possible world champion if he was able to get that chance again, I don't think it's right in here right now. So I don't think Ryback is a WWE World Heavyweight Champion to look at right now. Then you've got a returning Alberto Del Rio. Alberto Del Rio who returned at Hell in a Cell about two weeks ago. Shocked everybody as a matter of fact. People thought that Alberto Del Rio, he just switched to um, AAA to sign with them. He's their current AAA Mega Champion. Um, He has some Dates going at the uh, World Wrestling Council in Puerto Rico. Um, we thought he was going to be back for season two of Lucha Underground, and doing all these other independent dates, possibly with Ring of Honor and so thought for, so on and so forth. And I even heard that I think Alberto Del Rio even um, signed up for a, a, a small-time MMA promotion. I th- I think that's what I heard. It could be false, but I 
thought I heard that, but nonetheless, we thought Alberto, we thought the WWE was the furthest thing from Alberto Del Rio's mind, but we were wrong. He comes back at Hell in a Cell and defeats John Cena cleanly in five minutes to become the new United States champion. Now, clearly, they only did that because John Cena is going to be leaving and is taking some time off to do some other outside projects from the WWE. That's the only reason why they gave Alberto Del Rio that opportunity. That and also because the WWE desperately needs a Latino superstar that they can market around. Rey Mysterio is no longer there, and I don't even think he wants to come back at this point. And the Lucha Dragons are pretty much in prerogatory. Los Matadores are right now being repackaged. The WWE really didn't have a feasible... Um, you know, Latino star that they can really market towards that audience. So when Alberto Del Rio was the, was um, shown the opportunity to come back, they had no choice. They needed an Alberto Del Rio. Now, a lot of you people may not like him all you want. I'm not one of them. I think Alberto Del Rio is one of the best workers in the business today, and I think Alberto Del Rio is one of the best workers in the WWE today. An easy top five, maybe even a top three at this point, now that with all these injuries going in and out. You don't have Brian, you don't have Rollins. So I think even Alberto Del Rio is a top three um, worker. He is able to have a good match with anybody. I've rarely, I've rarely, in my opinion, seen a bad match with Alberto Del Rio. There probably have been some. I'm probably, you know, him and Big Show, their feud back when he was a face... I wasn't all that good, and the matches, I don't remember, were all that good, but Alberto Del Rio is able to adjust his in-ring skills and apply it to whatever match he's able to wrestle, whether that's a Dolph Ziggler, or a Cesaro, or a um, Reigns, or a Ryback, or an Owens, or a Big E, whatever. Alberto's able to adjust. So, the WWE is good for all the reasons that I just mentioned to have Alberto Del Rio come back. And plus, Alberto Del Rio, he's getting a big, lucrative contract. Now, people will say, does he deserve it or not? That's up for you to decide. That's up for you to debate. But Alberto Del Rio is a is a strong hand that you need at this point. He's a recognizable name. He's got all the markability. He's a great in-ring worker. I don't care what anyone says. You know, all he does is just case. Ah, stop. And, you know, he has he has a lot of benefits. However, there's one thing you didn't hear me say, though, and that's his character. He doesn't really have a character. He's never really had a good character. Maybe in the beginning when he was a Mexican aristocrat, if you will. But, you know, Alberto Del Rio, ever since he broke off with Ricardo, he never really had an intriguing character for people to really get behind. He's been given all these accolades, and he was never seemed to get over. And I don't know if the crowd will accept him for that. So I don't know if Alberto Del Rio is a guy that you give the world title to. I really don't, and probably people will think of push, and it'll be up for political reasons, which it possibly could be. So, I don't see Alberto winning um, the uh, title. Um, I think Alberto Rio is just going to be there to put certain people over while getting paid to do it. So, let's see. Well, can do John Cena. John Cena's out. Orton's out for four to six months. Brian's still out. So, you know, I, people can say Kevin Owens, but they're not they're not doing anything with Kevin Owens in terms of his momentum to make anyone believe he'd be a world champion. And he's an Intercontinental Champion, too. They won't give him that much kudos to actually pull the trigger. Um, I can already hear all the Dobbs Ziggler fans say, Ziggler, that's not happening. Ziggler's time, in my opinion, has pretty much been up. And here's the one thing. People keep thinking, and it's funny. People keep thinking Dolph Ziggler is this, cop, is this type of 20-something-year-old that deserves this big push. He's, I think he's 37 at this point. He's been in the WWE for more than a decade. So, you know, Dolph Ziggler's time, I'm sorry, I think personally has passed. People need to understand that there are certain wrestlers that need to be main eventers and some that aren't. That's the business. And Dolph Ziggler is in the latter category. He's not a main eventer. I mean, really really think about it. Would you really go to a live event to watch WWE Champion Dolph Ziggler defend a title against Brock Lesnar? And don't lie. Like, be honest. That's not a marketable match to put out there in the billboards, and the WWE recognizes that, so Dolph Ziggler isn't going to get that shot, nor should he. Cesaro, I like Cesaro, but you know they're not going to do anything with him. You know that they're not going to do anything with him. He's just a strong hand for them to give 
them matches and lose. That's all. Honestly, Cesaro is pretty much a full-time Chris Jericho. He's a full-time Chris Jericho. That's all Cesaro really is right now. So, we're down to two people with this whole Seth Rollins vacating his WWE World Heavyweight Championship. It comes down to either Sheamus or Roman Reigns. <laughs> and I'm sure the uh, certain sections of the uh, internet community when it comes to wrestling would prefer neither, but um, we live in reality here, so hear me out here. You've got Sheamus, Money in the Bank winner. And I've said it before, and I'm going to say it again. I have never... I don't think I've I I don't think I've cared any less for a Money in the Bank holder than I have with Sheamus. Maybe Jack Swagger was the closest, but I think Sheamus even outshines him. Because at least I thought with Jack, Jack Swagger, when he won the World Heavyweight Championship, that it would be a short run. Um, But yeah, Sheamus is boring as crap, man. You know, Sheamus... You know, Sheamus as a heel is good. He's better as a heel than he is a face. But his character sucks. And if he has a character, it's non-existent. You know, Sheamus looks stupid. I know what they're trying to do with that look, but it just looks stupid. I know he's got his Ninja Turtles movies doing for that look, but it it just Sheamus Sheamus is somebody that the crowd just collectively groans. Like ten years from now, Sheamus will start getting the Big Show Kane treatment, thinking. All the fans will go like, ah, Sheamus is still here. Man, I'm changing the channel. That's how Sheamus feels right now. Sorry. You know, I know he's, he's you know, he's got the big look and all that stuff, but I, you know, Sheamus, I, I don't see, I don't know, just, now I know that he's going to win the title at some point. They may just go into a Roman Reigns, Sheamus feud coming out of Survivor Series for all you know, but... I don't know. Sheamus as WWE World Heavyweight Champion has no buzz. It has no appeal currently, at least to me. I don't know if I'm alone for that. But I'm, I don't know. I don't know if I'm alone with that. But Sheamus to me as champion would have no buzz, no momentum, just no appeal whatsoever. So then you come down to Roman Reigns, and quite honestly, Roman Reigns is my guy that I feel should walk out of Survivor Series as the WWE World Heavyweight Champion. I can hear the collective groan all throughout the bandwidth, but deal with it. And you guys you guys need to quit being delusional for this reason alone. Just because of what happened at WrestleMania 31 happened does not mean the WWE's ultimate go, at least with Triple H, because people f- seem to forget it's not really Vince McMahon that is pushing for Roman Reigns to be the next guy. It's Triple H. People need to keep that in mind. Vince McMahon will still stick with the guys like John Cena and Randy Orton and Brock Lesnar to carry them for as long as they can carry him. But it's Triple H that is a Roman Reigns backer. Okay, Just because that Seth Rollins trolled everybody at WrestleMania 31 and won the title there does not mean the plans have changed. All Seth Rollins did, all that you know, finish did at WrestleMania 31... All you people not usually thought of is that, you know, you guys are just delaying the inevitable. Roman Reigns is going to be the next guy. He's going to be the next focal point of the company after John Cena's pretty much done. Because Cena, he's pretty much getting close to 40. And he's got outside projects. He's got marketability. He may be on his out. Maybe not anytime soon, but Cena's got... A secure blanket when he leaves the WWE, in my opinion. And who's going to be the next guy to take place? It's going to be Roman Reigns. You see it. You see it. You may not want that to happen. You may not even want to believe it to happen. But you just see that's where they're going with it. Honestly, honestly, if the WWE were smart about this, screw it. Now that Seth Rollins is injured, and knowing you're not going to do anything with Ambrose anyways... Might as well make it Roman Reigns versus John Cena at WrestleMania 32. The passing of the torch. Why not? Have Roman Reigns walking as cha- walk in as champion. John Cena the challenger. People don't know what the hell's going to happen if Cena's actually going to beat Reigns here. And have Reigns walk out as champion, defeating John Cena cleanly. So that way Cena can pass the torch to Reigns. 
He's going to be the guy. It's not going to be Rollins. It's not going to be an Ambrose. It's not going to be Ziggler. It's not going to be Cesaro. It's not going to be Owens. It's not going to be Ryback. It's, 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 it's Reigns. I, I don't see why people think that just because Roman Reigns has been kind of floating in the uh, upper portion of the mid-card means that they've given up on him. They haven't given up on him. The fact, the fact when John Cena usually does those breast cancer awareness videos, who else did it with him? Roman Reigns. He's going to be the guy. And, they're, and now they see it as a golden opportunity here to go with the ball. And you might as well do it. The only way Roman Reigns does not walk out of Survivor Series as champion is if Dean Ambrose turns heel. That's the only way that Reigns does not become champion at Survivor Series is if Dean Ambrose turns heel and Ambrose and Reigns have a feud heading up to WrestleMania. Because otherwise, I don't see anybody else that really has the momentum and the hype around him to win that title other than Reigns. Or at least comparatively speaking to Reigns. And quite honestly, people that are still hating on Roman Reigns at this point, you just clearly are hating. Because if I had an award for the most improved wrestler of the year, it would go to Roman Reigns. He has improved tremendously. Compare him from the beginning of this year at the Rumble to now. He has paid his dues. He has earned his right to get everyone's respect at this point. He has put on some solid to even great matches this year. And his finishers and his finishes to the matches that he does. Go ahead and watch the um, you know, 5 on 5 Survivor Series match from this week on Raw. That finish was beautiful. That finish was awesome. Roman Reigns knows how to finish as a main eventer. He's got the presence. He's got the look. He's got the aura of a main eventer. He's not bad in the ring anymore. His promos are hidden mess, yes. But let's be quite frank here. Let's be completely honest. Rollins wasn't any special on the mic either. Orton as champion wasn't any special on the mic either. John Cena has his hits or misses. So just because Reigns isn't a good promo, he just because... Reigns isn't a good interview guy, just because he's not a good mic skills kind of guy, doesn't mean that he can't get the world title when others have had that title, and they weren't any better or even worse than Reigns on the mic. So people are grasping at straws at this point, that's fine I guess, but people I think are just short-sighted. short-sighted. Roman Reigns is going to be your next WWE World Heavyweight Champion. I assume Reigns will have his mini feud with Sheamus. And then Reigns will feud with Ambrose heading into Mania. Or you can just do the Reigns Cena passing the torch match. Either way would be fine. But my pick is Roman Reigns to win the uh, WWE World Heavyweight Championship at um, Survivor Series. Because I don't see anyone else making sense other than Reigns. Not even Wyatt. Because Wyatt's occupied with The Undertaker and Sting. So, and Kane. So I don't see, I don't see Wyatt... Um, occupying that title anytime soon either. So, yeah, Reigns is my pick for those that wanted to know. But also another good thing about Rollins with this whole thing that is kind of missing is that Rollins, if he does come back, well, when he does come back, he'll come back as a face because I think he'll be gone. A lo- he'll be gone so long that people will start to miss Rollins. And I think Rollins, in my opinion, Rollins is a better face than a heel. In my opinion, his wrestling um, move set, his whole presence in the ring, the way he interacts with the crowd is better suited as a face than it is a heel. So when Rollins comes back, he'll be a nice face and you'll have fresh matchups with possibly a heel Reigns or a heel Ambrose or, you know, Kevin Owens, Triple H possibly. You know, you can go back to the Brock Lesnar. Well, again, you really haven't had a Brock Lesnar, uh, Seth Rollins feel full fledged feud. That went almost more than a month. So, there's a lot of possibilities for a face rain, um, face Rollins if you did it correctly. But, it's going to be interesting to see how Survivor Series goes down. Um, it's going to be interesting to see how Seth Rollins' is an injury kind of just changes the whole plans of um, WWE going forward. Because this product is horrible. Do not mistake it. Just because Seth Rollins is no longer available, just because Seth Rollins is currently inactive, does not mean this company doesn't suck. Because this company is horrible. 2015, in my opinion, has been one of the 
worst years product wise for the WWE. Their business may be so so. It may have quote unquote increases, but compared to the golden era, compared to the attitude era, hell, compared to the ruthless aggression era, what does that really mean? It's only just increased within the dwindling bubble that they have been able to accept as mediocrity for the past couple of years. That's all that really means. But quality rise quality um wise, product wise, in terms of the writing, the storytelling, and the overall entertainment of the company, 2015 has been one of the worst years I have ever seen this company put out any type of product. Like, it's legitimately, in my opinion, competing with 2010. It's competing with 1997. Like, this this year, mostly, I mean, put aside the great matches and stuff that have happened in this year, this company has had no momentum, mo- no buzz. And just because you have a deal with ESPN here, just because you're doing some things here for Dallas, Texas at WrestleMania 32, does not change it. You're going to have to basically get a lot of part-timers for WrestleMania 32 to not only sell out Cowboys Stadium, because heaven knows the Dallas Cowboys and their suckage can do it this season, but then the, but nonetheless, um, the WWE's going to have to pull out all the stops. Austin may have to wrestle again. Brock Lesnar will be there. Taker's retiring there. Sting will be there. Triple H will be there. If they get the Rock thing, he might have to be there. Like, the WWE will have to go to... Chris Jericho may have to be there. The WWE's going to have to go in full panic mode, and I don't think they realize it. I don't think they realize it yet. I don't think they understand the severity of how WrestleMania 32 needs to play out. I don't think they understand how bad this product has gotten to the point where your ratings are damn near going towards the 1.9 territory. Your numbers are going to spike TV era TNA numbers. You're going you're you're already at the SmackDown levels. How bad can they get at this point? Fix your shit, WWE. You know, I know all these apologists want to always come here and say this product is good. I give it a B. I give it an A. It's always these wrestling Facebook groups or these wrestling Twitter groups like NoDQ.com or Pro Wrestling Worlds or all these other Facebook groups that want to always sugarcoat the underlying truth. And the underlying truth is that this company, this company from a product quality standpoint absolutely sucks. There is no momentum. There is no buzz. There is no appeal to this company all you have really are great matches but even then if you don't have a story or if you don't have a compelling reason to watch these matches what's the goddamn point you know people are finding other alternative entertainment perspectives and I'm trying to clarify this because people on my last newscast missed the point obviously and Obviously, that certain section missed the point as well. Not surprised. But the whole point I was getting at on that last newscast that I'm going to make my point here with is that people are looking towards other sources of entertainment to get their their fix, if you will. Whether that's MMA, whether that's football going on, whether that's basketball coming back, or hell, and yes, I'll say it, even virtual wrestling CAW, not saying that CAW and pro wrestling are the same thing, that would be ridiculous, who would make a ridiculous argument like that, but I am saying that CAW is an alternative for some of these people to watch if they don't like certain things they see in pro wrestling, that's an absolute fact, I don't know how anyone can deny that or even try to argue that, but that's neither here nor there, so, with Seth Rollins injured, it's going to put the WWE in a somewhat free fall limbo, we'll see how they'll try to capitalize, but I... I'm not confident they will fully be able to do so. So I will be keeping an eye on that and see how that goes. All right. So that was the um, big pro wrestling story news out there. Um, Some other news out here that I've been hearing. Apparently I'm hearing that um, Spike TV may be interested with bringing TNA back on the fold. I don't know if those are confirmed or anything. But um, if so... One, that means TNA survives, or, because they're not thriving, but that would mean TNA survives yet another death nail. Um, it also means Spike TV knows how stupid it was for releasing TNA because TNA, whether they like it or not, was one of their um, most highly rated original television series, and, you know, Bellator and Glory and all their other MMA um, shows haven't really been given the buzz that Spike TV needs. That's why they're trying to change Spike TV from a man show into an overall 
typical network now. So I think Spike TV are realizing that they need a TNA to um, have a certain type of audience and fan base. But that's neither here nor there. Um, so we'll, we'll, we'll see how that goes. Lucha Underground is starting to get um, set up now with Season 2, which is going to be coming back in January. And I think tape is going to be starting in late November. So um, probably looking after that. Michael Elgin just did not re-sign a contract with the Ring of Honor. Um, there are reports that he might be reporting to NXT or he might be going down to um, New Japan um, to wrestle for them. So we'll see. We'll see how it goes. I'll be I'll be watching to see how everything goes from here on out. But um, let's switch gears to now CAW and more specifically ACW. Um, as you all know, Animania 4 is coming to you on December 18th, only on YouTube and maybe on other channels that I will talk about on a later date. But we're getting to the finish line, or at least I'm getting to the finish line here. I have about four episodes left. So I have one more episode of Excel. Well, here's the thing. I have one more episode of Excel left before Anime Revolution. And then I have three more episodes of Excel left before Animania 4. Um, and then Impulse, which will be released either tomorrow or later. I'm not going to I'm not gonna promise anything. But I basically have two more episodes there before Anime Revolution and three more before Animania. So... We're getting close. I'm I'm getting close. It's been a this um these last couple of days and weeks have been very tough, good and bad, but um I am trying to toughen it out. I am trying to get through it. I see the light at the end of the tunnel. And I'm trying to reach it cuz um after Animania 4 I will be taking a longer than usual hiatus cuz I I I I'm I got to be honest. I I need it. I need I need a pretty long hiatus. Uh, so I, just to rest, just relax my mind, but, um, we're almost getting there, so, just, you know, stay tuned for that, so, again, like I just said on the, uh, probably last newscast I did or whatever, probably on the, uh, Facebook and Twitter accounts, um, I'm not gonna be promising any, uh, set dates as to when Excel or Impulse, um, show up, so please don't ask. Um, when is Excel or Impulse going to be posted? They'll be posted when I can be able to post them. Um, I'm sure there'll be some delays. I'm sure there are going to be some more delays coming up. But that's, the, again, I have no choice. I really have no kind of free will to kind of make it not become delays at this point. I'm just kind of trying to get through it at this point. Um, at this point, at this point. At this, I keep saying at this point. Um, but... Yeah, I'm just there's just a little quick update. I'm I'm getting close there. I'm just I'm I'm getting done. I'm I'm getting um I'm I'm almost there. I'm I'm almost there. Let's put it that way. Um, Anime Revolution is going to be the next mega event coming out. It should be coming out on November 20th. But again, probably some delays coming in. So November 20th is the goal, but it's nothing kind of official. Um, yeah, so. And I try to, and I'm gonna be looking to make anime, Animania 4 the biggest Animania yet. I have some ideas, as you know. And then you've got Animania 4 week coming up, so I'll be, I will be releasing dates and information as to how that whole thing goes for Animania 4. To let you all know, so we'll see. Um, all right. With that said, we are closing in 40 minutes here. Let me get to the newscast questions you guys all sent me. Give me a second here. Whoa. Big burp. I was trying to hold that in for 40 minutes. I was like, uh, I can't do it. And I'm not going to cut it out. I'm just going to leave it in there. Alright, so we're going we're gonna to get into some questions and comments. You guys sent me a lot of them, and as always, thank you for sending me the questions and comments for every newscast episode I do. Um, for future um, newscast episodes, however, except, you know, ones that are exceptions like the Animania newscast or whatever. Um try to try to limit try to limit the number of questions that you ask me. So um I will like accept no more than three questions. So if you post more than three questions, um I will ignore the questions after three. So, you know, just try to make them three good questions if that's the maximum you're gonna go for. But I'm I'm gonna try to not be answering a lot of questions from the same people. Um, you know, you, you get um, get what I'm saying, because I, I don't want to always be having to do these type of long newscasts, you know, 
just, I just I just can't really be doing that anymore. So, with that said, and, and it's going to start with this newscast episode here, so anyone that sent more than uh, three questions are going to have certain questions ignored, so a little bit future reference for all of you, but let's get it started here. Um, Darian Rouse, let's see, asked me two questions here. Um... One, what do you think of WWE 2K16, and would you consider doing ACW on the game in the future? Um, well, I can't really give an I can't really give an opinion on WWE 2K16 because I have not bought it. Um, Black Friday slash Cyber Monday is coming up pretty soon, so um, maybe that's when I'll just buy the game there, along with um, the PS4. But, um, yeah. I can't really give an opinion on WWE 2K16. I can somewhat give you my thoughts on what I've seen from WWE 2K16 from certain people. Um, the graphics look amazing. They look almost real. Almost real. Um, I've seen some of the glitches and botches. They've been pretty funny. Um, I know people are bitching about story designer. But, um, let me, let me, I, I'm about to make a little rant, a little mini rant here, but... For for those that are bitching about story designer not being included on this year's game, um, let that be a testament to how I'm trying to look for the right word here. Let that be a testament to how comfortable that a lot of you call owners and leagues have gotten with story designer, because you guys act like you know C A W began when Storyline Designer was introduced. People forget that we didn't have Story Designer. It really was just having two, you know, controllers facing each other with their players, and that would be a promo. But now that Story Designer has made it easier, immediately enough, now people feel the need that they need it in their game. And granted, you know, Story Designer should come back for the next game next year for 2K17, but people acting like they can't do cost shows because of Storyline Designer... I mean, story designer are being ridiculous because we've had this situation before and we were able to get around it, or at least some of us were able to get around it, and I don't see how you can't get around it now. You may even have to switch back and forth with uh, 2K16 and 2K14 or slash WWE13 to do it, but, you know, it's not, it's not, it's, it'll be difficult, but it's not impossible is what I'm getting at here. So people that are acting like they can't be able to, um, you know, they, they can't be able to do CAW now because story designers not in there are being r- ridiculous, in my opinion. But, and would you consider doing ACW on the game in the future? Never say never. I will leave it at that. Um, and his second question here was, also, the anime revolution on the way, Kento's Kusatsu wrestling superstars and knockouts appear in some episodes in Impulse to help put an end to the JSA. You know, you're not the only person, you're not the only league or group that has offered their, uh, you know, help with uh, JSA in that whole situation. But, you know, do what you have to do. But uh, Goku is back now, thank goodness. Ryu's back, thank goodness, which shocked me, by the way. Um, I think things, I think things are going to start picking up. And now with Sasuke Uchiha becoming the Impulse Rumble winner this year, things are going to really heat up. So we'll find out on the newest episode of Impulse to see how ACW now starts to respond to the JSA ahead of Anime Revolution Animania. Um, let's see. Kanon Jackson Jr. asked, um, do you think my roster will save ACW from the JSA? Again, you guys do what you, you guys do what you have to do, but, you know... I think ACW will be... I think ACW finally has an answer to all this. Just my opinion. Um, Raymond Dudley asked, uh, What do you think of the Wolves, Hollow, and Juvia and UCCW? Uh, again, I don't really follow the roleplay stuff that y'all do, so I can't really give an honest opinion on that. Um, I see it as a typical tag team that is in UCCWs for... Um, all intents and purposes, so, yay, I guess, I, I don't know, I really don't have an opinion on it, but, yeah, um, John Mercer, yeah, it's three questions, yay, um, is ACW gonna do a, oh, no, no, it's not, no, it's not three questions, just one long one, okay, is ACW gonna do, like, a split the same way NGW did before, 
In case you're unfamiliar, well, I am. I, I'm aware of Frederick's work. All the girls went from NGW to create the VWF. So imagine if HCW splits gender-wise, Impulse would be all guys and Excel would be called Glamour Excel. Um, no. No, I, I, I wouldn't... Um, I understand, you know, I understand that women's wrestling is starting to grow into something bigger than it once was instead of just like a niche uh, segment for the audience. I get it. You know, and I see, again... I, I used to watch NGWs, so I know. But, you know, Frederick, as um, he created uh, VWF, you know, an all-ladies league. SCA, obviously, has a uh, all-ladies league, and you're seeing other leagues now do their own um, kind of uh, all-ladies league, like Russell Parade out there, which you guys should check out, Bread of Wonder. I'm just going to give them a plug out there. Uh, Russell Parade is on one of them. And you've seen all the you've seen other leagues now emphasize women's wrestling, and um, again, if you didn't watch Queens of Pro Wrestling just a few days or weeks ago, you guys really should. DCA hosted a multi-league uh, event at Eddie Mac from CCL and myself, and um, Josh from uh, DCA were all able to commentate on, and um, it was a great experience. It was a it was a fun event. Really emphasized women in the virtual wrestling, so go check that out if you can, but, um, yeah, I wouldn't, I'm not gonna, I'm not, I wouldn't do a, I'm not gonna do a gender split, um, does, does that mean that I wouldn't expand the Glamrex division more? That's not necessarily the case, um, I'm probably gonna find ways to, uh, expand the Glamrex division, but I'm not going to the links to make it its own kind of brand, if you will, I, I think I think that I think people doing that so much now has not it stopped making it become unique. So yeah, I just I wouldn't I wouldn't do the NGW VWF thing basically. Um, Kyle Franks asked thoughts on Seth Rollins' knee injury. I just pretty much stated it on the beginning of the newscast, so just rewind it if you didn't get a chance to hear it. Uh, John Blackos, what did you think of what do you think of CXWI? Eh. I, I, okay, I'll say this. I'll say this about um, um, CXWI. I do appreciate the fact that they are one of the very few colleagues to this day that still use the uh, Day of Reckoning series. Because as a lot of old school ACW fans will tell you and understand, and, and understandably so, um, ACW started on Day of Reckoning 2 uh, for Excel and Impulse before we moved to uh, SmackDown vs. Raw 2007. I think it was I moved Impulse up to SmackDown vs. Raw 2007, and then Excel got it in 2008, something like that. But yeah, so I always have an appreciation for leagues that uh, use Day of Reckoning 2 or Day of Reckoning doesn't matter which one. They're both great games. Um, I still have appreciation for those leagues that still use those. So, but CXWI, it's kind of its own niche product. It's kind of, I'm, I'll be honest, it's kind of hit or miss. With me at times, like, some, you know, matches are like, oh, okay, that wasn't bad. And there were some matches that were like, ugh, it wasn't all that good. It was in, the stories are like, ugh. But, you know, again, it's its own little kind of niche. So I can't really get mad at that. Do you like the Tales of Series? I think that's a CXWI thing. I think that's what you're talking about. I don't, again, this whole role-playing stuff, I don't, I'm not... I don't really get into. I think it's quite honestly. I think it's a little bit childish. But I don't really do this role play stuff on Facebook or Twitter or even on CAW. But I understand people do it and have fun doing it. So I'm not gonna ruin others' enjoyment by saying, "Oh, you guys shouldn't do role play." I'm not gonna force my opinions on them. If they have fun doing role play, that's their own business. I'm not gonna tell them not to do it. It's just not for me. It's just not something that I do. I just kind of find it a little. Weird, but again, that's just my opinion. And thoughts on OCBF? Eh, you know, I, I you know I enjoy the uh, I enjoy the Deadpool interactions that OCBF does, and I enjoy the request match they date that they do. Um, I, I do enjoy some of the things that OCBF does, but again, it's it's another niche uh, league, it's another niche product um, for certain people. So again, it'll be for some people, it won't be for some people. Um. All right, let's see. Gary Connell Jr. asked three questions. All right. 
Question number one, what are your thoughts on the NFL season so far? It's been a weird season. Like, the Colts are mediocre. Who saw that coming? The Broncos, as much as I am a diehard Broncos fan, as much as I am a Broncos fan, even I am surprised that the Broncos are 7-0. and Again, I'm not going to complain. I mean, I love it personally. But, again, 7-0, and especially when their season, when they first started, Peyton Manning was horrible offensively at times to the point where there were other defenses. Like the Oakland Raiders in that game, they challenged the Broncos. Like the first few games of the Broncos uh, season this year has been all defense. And Peyton Manning, you can see his age is showing. He is still able to do some remarkable things, but... His age is clearly showing. His age is clearly there whenever he snaps the ball. But then again, he doesn't even snap the ball anymore. He just pushes it now. Um, his playmaking is starting to get more questionable. He's always on the pocket now, and these young defenses are not going to allow that to become a thing of the. Uh, are not going to allow that to become a recurring thing. It's going to be a thing of the past now with a lot of these dynamic quarterbacks like a Cam Newton or Russell Wilson, or you know, um, well, <laughs> before what's Kaepernick, but. Um, yeah, so I'm surprised with that. You know, Patriots are still being the Patriots. I, I I, can't stand the Patriots. I almost have the absolute hatred for them. But they are who they are. They are champions for a reason. They are the defending Super Bowl champions for a reason. Um, they are undefeated as well. Uh, 7-0. And they may repeat Super Bowl again. That's scary. That should be scary for every AFC team there. Uh, the Bengals are... Becoming those wild card picks that no one really would thought so. I think this would be their year. If um, certain teams are not careful, I think they can really pull it off. The Panthers, I think they're doing good as well, although I think their defense is a little bit overrated than a lot of people give it credit for. Um, the Niners are imploding from within. Um, and that whole organization is just is just trash. And now you're hearing reports that, you know, we've got now Vernon Davis. Vernon Davis left the Niners to join our Broncos. Kaepernick's been benched. Gabbard is starting. Um, Tatsula is probably going to have his coaching uh, spot vacated by the end of the season. Kaepernick may be gone by the end of the season, and he probably should be. Kaepernick has regressed ever since that playoff appearance, and even ever since that Super Bowl appearance. He has regressed. He has been exposed. He only throws in one way. He is never able to read his offense or defense, and whenever he is pushed, he gets sacked to the point where he doesn't want to run. Remember when Kaepernick used to be a good running quarterback? Now he's now now he's scared to do that even now, and that was his best trait. He has lost all confidence. The players don't respect him. The management doesn't know how to use him, and Kaepernick himself doesn't seem like he gives a shit about it. Uh, Kaepernick doesn't even seem like he is a shit anymore. He just wants to get his paycheck. He knows his ass might be gone by the end of the season. He's just here to ride along. And I think the Niners need to kind of get. And I think the right. And I think the Niners need to get rid of Kaepernick. Honestly, they, they're going to have to in order for them to get a respectable quarterback. Although this quarterback class isn't looking that hot, coming out from you know the college football season, they're going to have to draft a quarterback. They cannot, they cannot trade for another team's second helpings. They cannot sign a free agent quarterback. They need to get a fresh quarterback through the draft to make their franchise player and their centerpiece of that organization. They have to. But I don't think they will. I think the Niners think that they are better than than what they truly are. And I think when you're on a day now when the Raiders are more competitive than the Niners... You know, the, you know, I'm I'm from Sacramento. You know, I'm watching all this go down, and then the Raiders are are just kicking ass. I mean, yeah, they're not really showing themselves to be all that good. And it's gonna take a, it's gonna still take years for them to rebuild. But they found their quarterback. I think Derek Carr is their answer. I think Michael Crabtree has been a, an exceptional good player for them. I think Cooper's been great as well. I, 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 I think Cooper's shown himself to be a formidable player for the Raiders as well. You know, so. The Raiders have all the pieces, but again, it's going to take them years to actually get all the pieces aligned. But yeah, it's been a crazy football season, and I really don't even have a pick for the Super Bowl. I thought the, I thought the Seahawks would be our NFC representatives, but the Seahawks are just blowing it. They're blowing it, and I think that's because, personally, I think it's because the big-time contracts that 
the Russell Wilsons and the Shermans and and the Jimmy Grahams and the Marshawn Lynches, I think it's not I think it's made them less hungry. I think that they are not wanting to become NFC representatives to go to the Super Bowl. I think the money, the big time contract money has gotten into their head. That and then just all the pieces aren't there. The offensive line is inconsistent. Russell Wilson is having off days where he needs to be on. It's just a lot of problems with the, with the Seattle. So, yeah, it's been a crazy NFL season. It's still early, but damn, what a season indeed. Question number two, what is your favorite style of wrestling? <sighs> well, I like all wrestling. When I, when I say that, I like... You know, I, I like that there is something for everybody. I like that's the that's the type of wrestling company that knows what they're doing. That's the best type of quote unquote pro wrestling when there is something for everybody. It doesn't have to be all wrestling and it doesn't have to be all entertainment, if you get my drift. But um my favorite style I think it would have to be Lucha Libre. Just because I, I think, you know, other than watching, you know, WWE, WCW back in the day, you know, I would always have, um, I would always have, um, <laughs> Mexican babysitters when I was a kid. And, um, like, legit, like, we're not talking about American born, like, like, legit, they came out from the border, like, Mexican babysitters. And, um, they would always put on Lucha Libre. And I was always entertained to watch Lucha Libre when they put it on. So I, I, it still stuck with me to this day. Now, Lucha Libre is pretty much just choreographed gymnastics in a way, but um, I have I have a affinity with uh, Lucha Libre, so I think that would be my favorite style of wrestling. I, I think it would be Lucha Libre. Um, what are your current thoughts about W2K16? I just pretty much gave that, basically. Um, Garak Weevil has three questions. Let's see. Number one. What, who do you see as Zero's match? Iris, Lair, or Seal? Mm, be a tie between Iris and Seal, but I think Seal would edge out just a little bit. But it, even then, I think Zero's still better than all three, in my opinion. But that's just me. Um, two, why do you prefer Dragon Ball over Dragon Ball Z? Okay. You know, I've been waiting to kind of done, do a video about this whole situation because I've said it time, time, time again. Okay. Number one, DBC fanboys, I know you're out there. Suck a strap. Number two, um, Dragon Ball is better for this sole reason. Now, there are many reasons. The characters are better. The action is more reasonable than it is in DBZ. But honest to God, the only reason, the reason why Dragon Ball whips DBZ's ass alone is because of the story. And if, in a way, you can relate this to pro wrestling, because here's the thing. Dragon Ball was about a kid from the mountains called Goku, who thought it was normal until he understood that he had Saiyan blood within him. And so he trained with his friends to be able to become the strongest Saiyan alive and fight those that try to stop and or oppress him. A simple story, but had so many multiple and complex layers that everything made sense. Do you remember when Goku wasn't an insufferable character like he was in DBZ forward? That was Dragon Ball. Goku was actually a damn good protagonist compared to him in Dragon Ball Z. Now I know DBZ, and let's and let's and, and, and you know what? Let's be completely honest. Let's be perfectly honest here. The only reason why a lot of you people give a shit about DBZ and would only put DBZ over DB, you know, Dragon Ball, is because of the fight scenes. That's all you guys give a shit about. Because if we strip away the fight scenes from DBZ, Dragon Ball Z is a convoluted mess of a story. You know, Frieza comes in unannounced. It took like five episodes of filler for them to even explain Frieza's story. And even then, it wasn't even explained fully until you got the movie of that whole origin. 
and then Frieza is killing everybody here, and then and then Goku has to be the one to sacrifice himself to kill Frieza, and we thought Goku dies, but no, Goku comes back alive, and then Goku tries to go to the Cell games, and yada yada, and you get the whole situation. DBZ, honestly, would have been so much better if Gohan became the protagonist, the main protagonist of the story, than Goku. Goku's time already passed. That was Dragon Ball. For Goku to still be the focal point of DBZ at this point was redundant. I mean, he was John Cena before John Cena was a thing. So, I think it's better because the story is better. The story and the way they were able to intertwine so many things into that story is the reason why Dragon Ball wipes the floor with Dragon Ball Z any day. Once again, I know you people just give a shit about DBZ because of the fight scenes and the power-ups and, you know, Goku being the savior and Vegeta saying all the cool quotes and all this bullshit, but... And trust me, I liked that too when I was a kid, and, and, I, and even then I still enjoy it to this day. I'm not saying I hate Dragon Ball Z, but to compare it to Dragon Ball, saying that Dragon Ball Z was the best um, of the trilogy is ridiculous. Dragon Ball was the best of the trilogy. The original was the best of the trilogy. And I'm not even trying to sound like a hipster saying, oh, no, no, oh, the original is better than Dragon Ball Z. I'm really not trying to be one of those douches, but Dragon Ball was just a better show, period. It was a better story. It was a better show with character development. And it was just a better and realistic kind of way people can relate to it than Dragon Ball Z. And if people can just take away their rose-covered glasses for just a second and realize that, they would agree. So, that's why I think DBZ is better. I mean, DB is better than DBZ. And three, you may not get this, but what is your codec frequency? I don't get it. I don't know what that question means. Do I want to know what it means? Probably not. I, I, I don't know what that means. Um, William Simeon asked, Hey, Hakeem, what are your thoughts on how Trevor Noah has done so far on The Daily Show? I think he's done well. I think he's done, I think he's done exceptional. I think he's done pretty much as good as he can do to be John Stewart's replacement. Listen, here's the thing. You could have gotten John Oliver. Or Stephen Colbert could have said, screw CBS and done The Daily Show himself. It was going to be big shoes to fill with Jon Stewart leaving The Daily Show. Because I think for a lot of people it was so sudden. But I think Trevor Noah is getting a bad rep here. I think people are just shitting on Trevor Noah because he isn't Jon Stewart. And if that's the reason why, that's a shitty reason to shit on him. If you don't find some of his jokes funny, if you don't find his demeanor funny, alright, that's a subjective opinion, but it's opinion. it's an opinion nonetheless. But to, but to say that he completely sucks, as if John Oliver didn't get that same treatment when he was a temporary host for Jon Stewart while Jon Stewart was doing that movie about I don't, I don't, what he was doing, I don't, I don't I even forgot, but while he was doing that movie, I remember John Oliver was getting the same shit too. So I think Trevor Noah, yeah, he's had his moments where it's like, eh, that was not funny, but I think he's just getting, I think he's just adjusting with the show so far. I think... Give him a year or two, people will stop bitching about it. That's that because that's the thing, you know. That's the thing with social media. People just bitch just to bitch now. There's like there's no reason for people to bitch anymore. They just they just bitch. Like that, that's 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 just their mantra. And it's like, you know, at least have a reason. You know, I'm not saying Trevor Noah is you know, you know, gut busting funny or anything, but I think he's done a good job to do the things he's done so far, and I'm not going to shit on him for it. Sorry. Okay. Preston Pierce. Is there any league ACW would like to do a crossover show with other than the leagues that have already done a super show with ACW? Well, first of all, um, well, I did the crossover show with NJCW. Check that out on their channel. Um, I will be doing a super show with UCCW as part of Animania 4 Week. So look out for that. I will be honest, though. I probably am going to kind of not do a lot of um, super shows in the future, though. Like, not, not saying that I'm not going to do any. Not not saying that I'm not going to do any, but I think uh, I'm not, like, not going to do any super shows anytime soon, basically. But to answer your question, though, any super shows that I would want to do, 
Well, let's get the obvious out of the way. I would want to do a show with uh, SCAW. You know, you know, the, you know, the two leagues from a uh, once golden era. You know that I've been doing it for ten years now. You know, actually do a super show. So I, you know, I mean, just just to give the fans what they want. You know, just to just to really have the fans, you know, enjoy that moment. But you know, the last of the Mohicans, you know, ACW and SCAW. I would, I wouldn't oppose doing a super show with Lone Star. So it's got to be the right timing, right place, right moment, kind of thing. But I wouldn't mind doing it. I would have said CCL, but you know, they're, you know, they're probably getting close to being done now. Although I think CCL still has legs. I don't, you know, you know, this being the final season, I'm still kind of, I, I haven't accepted the fact that CCL. Is on their on their final season just because I think CCL can still do more. I really do, but you know, that's not my decision. That's Eddie's. Um, yeah, those would be the you know those would be the super shows that I could really think of so far. SCAW and CCL, probably about it. Um, Torn Anthony Fluker asked four questions. Well, I'm only going to answer three, and I'll answer the three that I haven't really gone over yet. So. Number one, are you feeling hype about OCBF's Deadpool movie coming out this year? I mean, next year on February 16th. Meh. I'm, you know what? I'm going to be honest with you. And I, and I want you to listen because I don't want this to sound like I'm bashing Deadpool, but I need this to be said from, from me personally. A lot of you people have had Deadpool memes, Deadpool costumes... Deadpool videos, uh, Deadpool fan-made videos, Deadpool characters in CAW, um, a lot of Deadpool marks, let's put it that way. And now you're getting the movie. You better make this movie the number one movie that week, is all I'm going to say. For all the hype that you've done for Deadpool for all these years, you're finally getting the movie. And Ryan Reynolds is going to be in the movie. Apparently he's a fan of the Deadpool character itself. So it's not like he's going to suck like he did in Green Lantern. But you, the audience, it's time to put up or shut up. It is time to put your money where your mouth is. If you're going to legitimize this Deadpool hype, if you're going to make this Deadpool momentum finally be legitimized through the uh, cinematic portion of his rise, you do it by making this movie the number one movie of that week. Or even longer if you can. But it has to be the number one movie. Because if this doesn't become the number one movie, or hell, if it doesn't even make budget, or hell, if it doesn't even place top five or top ten, then what was the whole hype for the Deadpool shit? What, what, what does it matter? You know, a lot of you people said you wanted a remake of the final... F- I mean, the, sorry. The remake, of, uh, the remake of the Fantastic Four series. And they did that. And it flopped. We'll see if Deadpool is legitimate, this superstar that you guys have made him out to be for so long, but it's time to put up or shut up with Deadpool, with this movie, in my opinion. I'm just going to put it that way. Um, number two, since Jessica Pink was threatening to be released from CXWI after Hyperlink, what are your thoughts about Wanda Maximoff signed to CXWI thanks to Ben Hopkins and attacked Jessica Pink at Melee episode 95? I have, I have not seen that episode, I'm going to be honest, I haven't seen it, so I wouldn't, can't get, really give you an honest opinion, but... Yeah, I I really can't I, I I can't give an honest opinion. I, I haven't seen that episode yet. And for which fall anime of 2015 is to watch, and who will be signed to ACW in the future? Well, the fall anime that I'm watching so far it's kind of few right now. I'm gonna probably pick up on some more later, but I'm watching One Punch Man, which I'm still mixed with. By the way, I, I see the hype for One Punch Man. You know, I'm already I'm already getting tired of the One Punch Man Goku death battles and shit because I knew that was coming. The second this show was coming to be a thing, I knew that um, Satoma Saitoma's gonna be that guy that finally beats Goku and all that bullshit like he is an OP as fuck. So I knew that was coming, but I'm still mixed because I like the the um I like the uh, potential it has. It's just the animation. And certain other things are just kind of throwing me off to make me not fully be engaged with it, if that makes any sense. But I'm following that show. 
Uh, I'm following season two of Seth Roth of the End. Um, that show's basically an attack on Titans, but with uh, <laughs> vampires instead of Titans. But uh, yeah, I'm, I'm following that show. I'm not really following any other, any other shows, but again, I've just started my uh, fall anime watching, so um, I'm probably sh- I probably am sure that I'm gonna get more shows. Um, in my list in the next few days and weeks, so, let's see, Eddie Siledo asked, when will you release a video on TPP, um, I have been following it, first of all, so you worse say, it's looking to be a worse, uh, bill, that even Soap and Pippa could not even match, but, a video, I'll, I'll throw a video in sometime soon. I won't promise it, but I'll try to do a video on it. Again, I'm busy, so, you know, making videos is kind of uh, a low priority at this point, but I'll see what I can do. I, that's all I can promise, really. Charles Bells asked three questions. One, with Seth Hurt, who would you like to be um, WWE Champion? Pretty much just answered that. I said Roman Reigns should be the new WWE champion. It makes sense. It's the only way you can really go that wouldn't seem somewhat credible, in my opinion. Two, with TNA ending on Destination America, how much longer do you think it has left? So, it's not official. People are going by what Dixie Carter said on Sports Illustrated and what certain dirt sheets have reported it hasn't been official now the reports are saying that TNA is going to will be leaving will be leaving destination america um by february february of next year which is fine because i think destination america is a minuscule show and channel i mean sorry it's a minuscule channel that um there's no benefit for TNA other than to say that they have a tv deal and again, I heard the reports that TNA has about four networks they're talking to to sign with. And I heard also that Spike TV is interested in bringing them back. So TNA, so TNA will still have life, basically. And even if it didn't have a TV deal in the U.S., it still has TV deals in uh, England and uh, even in India with Sony 6 and also other countries, so they have a structure internationally where they are set to where if they didn't have a U.S. TV deal, although that's where the big bucks come from, they'll still be able to run a company, even though it'll just be a very small company. So, I don't think TNA is going to be uh, folding anytime soon. Um, and number three, any opponents you would like to see Jury or Revy face in ACW? Uh, for Jury, obviously I would like to see Jury and Rako. It makes too much sense. I think Jury and Cammy would also be an interesting match because those two are Smash Mouth as Smash Mouth comes. For Revy, mm, I think Revy and Eno for their characters because Revy and Eno are two polar opposites. So those two would probably have a good feud. Um... I think Revy and Reiko would also be another good match. It would challenge Revy to adopt a new kind of style that no one has ever seen her wrestle in any other league. So, yeah, I think those are some credible op- opponents. All right, Vinny Christian VPAC asked through. Oh, two questions. There you go. Oh, three. Okay, so didn't see that. Um, let's see, number one. I know you are having a tough time with scheduling. I would like to help out with Animania 4 as I have a couple ideas for special interests. Would you be interested in hearing about them? Yes, I would. You know, um, first of all, everyone should give VPAC credit for helping me out for Animania 3 last year with some of the videos that he did um, as special entr- um, entrances and even the hype videos for certain matches. So I appreciate VPAC's help and I am looking forward to VPAC helping me again this year if VPAC is able to do so. So I'm I'm not opposed to VPAC helping. So all the help that I can can that I can get, brother. 
Let's see, number two, will Shao Kahn return to do more ring announcing for Anna Video 4? Um, probably not. I, I actually have that cover this year, so you probably will not hear Shao Kahn do any, uh, <laughs> ring announcing. Yeah, that was, that was a, that was a nice little Easter egg there, but, um, yeah. And number three, how did you get that neat animation of the crowd for your match cards for Anime Revolution? Eh, Pawn 5. That, and I'm a pretty good graphic editor. You know, it's a career that I am possibly looking into, so I've been able to kind of work on my craft as it pertains to that, so. Let's see, Joshua Hal asks three questions here. Did you go off in that class when they were talking about feminism, or did it ever go that far? Eh, yes and no. It didn't go that far, but I did bring up the fact that, you know, f you know, why would you want to use a quota for females when you should hire the best people that are good for the job, period. Because if you do use a quota or you do use a law that has to force women or force any kind of section of people to be hired into a job, then what you are saying is that that section of people can only be able to be seen as hireable if they have a law or a crutch to be able to do so. You should be able to get the job because you were the best at that job. You should be able, you know, yada, yada. That's basically what I said at class. That and the whole, you know, equal pay um, statistic that is, that has been debunked by many people um, worldwide. So I don't even need to go over that as well. But I said my piece about it. Um, does Roman Reigns at least deserve a transitional reign as WWE World Heavyweight Champion? Yes. Roman Reigns is just a title reign as WWE World, Heavyweight, WWE World Heavyweight Champion. He has earned it. You know, a lot of these haters need to understand that Roman Reigns has improved tremendously compared to this year. I mean, the beginning of, the beginning of this year. Roman Reigns deserves at least to get an opportunity to show if he's that guy. Now, I'm sure all these people are going to try to derail him and try to do everything they can to undercut his title reign because they're whiny bitches, but yes, I think Roman Reigns deserves to hold that title for a while. I, I do. Sorry. You know? I'm sure everyone's going to say, Hi, do let Cesaro be that guy, but Cesaro hasn't done shit. As a character, at least. I, I, I love Cesaro. I love Claudio, but I'm being a realist here. He hasn't done shit. He hasn't done anything momentum-wise to garner a WWE World Heavyweight title reign. And let's be honest, even if Cesaro or Owens did win the title, a lot of you would a lot of you would do the typical shit and get bored with them within three months and say, nah, I want Neville to be champion now. You know you would. Thank goodness Daniel Bryan didn't get a long reign with that title because otherwise you would have done the same shit. That's what you guys always do. You did it with CM Punk. Remember everyone said, oh, CM Punk, he's the WWE Champion, now things going to get better. And then it got to the point where you guys wanted Undertaker and John Cena to take the title away from him. You guys are, you know, and, I'm not, and I'm not trying to generalize and say everybody, but some sections of the internet wrestling community are so fair whether they, they're, they're like kids that get their new toy, three months later they throw it away, just so they can bitch and moan and cry to their parents about another new toy that just came out. Or or if you want to be honest, you know, these are people like, they buy the new iPhone and there's a new version of the iPhone so they throw the old one away. It's like, shit makes no sense. You guys said you wanted new people? You guys said you wanted new stars on top? You're getting them. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. No, what you really meant is that you wanted the new future talent that you like, that you support, I get you. Fuck out of here. Um, third question: Do you believe that the wrestling fan base is as bad as the Sonic and Steven Universe fan bases? Well, for, to my recollection, I don't think the wrestling fan base has ever looked, looked at a wrestler's arms and said that they were too tan, so they're not their favorite wrestler anymore. Or ever pushed a wrestler to suicide. Or almost attempted suicide. So, that alone, no, they're not that bad. I mean, we wrestling fans 
are pretty damn stubborn. We're pretty damn stupid. Sometimes we're pretty damn horrible, but compared to the Sonic universe, and especially as of late, compared to the Steven Universe fan base, nah. Nah, nah, not close. Not even close. Charles John- Johnson asked two questions. Number one, do you consider yourself a liberal or a conservative when it comes to who you vote for? Um, I'll put it this way. When I was, I guess I'd be your, I, I guess I used to be, I used to be a standard modern liberal back in high school when I didn't really give a shit about politics. But as I did get interested in politics because um, political science is my major, as I did get interested in it, um, and I started seeing the left use a lot of tactics that they shame the right for. I'm, let's be completely honest here. A lot of these gender extremists and feminists from the left are doing the same authoritarian shit that religious extremists on the right used to do. It's the truth. Like, you can't even criticize Hillary Clinton without being called a sexist. It's like, no, I'm not talking shit about Hillary Clinton because she's a woman. I'm talking shit about her because I think she's horrible for the job, and I think people need to shut the fuck up about we needing a first female president. It's going to happen, but you just hope to God it's not Hillary Clinton because Hillary Clinton is acting like she's going to do these things for you. How can anybody with a conscience, and you can hate him all you want, you can make fun of him all you want, because I have my fun at making fun of him all you want, but how can anyone talk shit about Donald Trump and yet have the audacity to vote for Hillary Clinton. Somebody explain that shit to me. Yes, Donald Trump is using this political presidential run as a, you know, pretty much long advertisement for him and his brand. Everyone knows that. Everyone knows he's not going to actually be the president of the United States. Everyone's just being hip, you know, everyone's just being hysterical. Once February hits and the Iowa caucuses start to begin and Super Tuesday begins, Donald Trump will see himself out the door. He was the Herman Cain of 2015. He's the Sarah Palin of 2015. He's 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 the candidate that, you know, people don't know about. He's the wild card, but you know he's not going to do anything. So, uh, stop with the, you know, hysteria. But again, Democrats and the people on the left that need to, that are acting like Republicans are horrible, need to look themselves in the mirror. Out of all the candidates, I would vote for Bernie Sanders, but even I'm questioning Bernie Sanders to the point where, how is anyone going to pay for all this free shit that you're giving? And how are you able to consistently do it without me, the taxpayer, trying to pay for it? That's a legitimate question. I'm sorry. And Hillary Clinton, you know she's not going to do shit about regulating banks because her whole campaign donors are from those banks. Like, people need to research the shit before they vote. Like, Hillary Clinton, Hillary Clinton, her campaign donors, Bank of America, Walmart, Wells Fargo, Morgan Stanley, they're all, they're all firms and banks and law firms that defend these banks, supporting Hillary Clinton. And yet you're here to tell me that Hillary Clinton is going to regulate the big banks and try to make a fair and equal balance for the little guy against these big banks? Get the fuck out of here! I almost did my newscast lab, but I don't want to laugh for five minutes. The question is, though, is if I vote as a liberal or conservative. I'll be, I'm going to just say this right now. I um, I used to be a liberal. I used to be a a far left liberal, to be honest with you, but as I saw the hypocrisy on the left, as I saw the absolute disdain of free speech and true equality that the left pretends to think that exists in their ranks, but it's just all forced quotas just to make themselves feel less guilty and in some terms why guilt, um, I, I don't consider myself a liberal anymore. I'm more of a libertarian, if you want me to be honest. I've never voted Republican. I've never like voted conservative, and I'm not a conservative by any stretch. But I think being a liberal is just as bad at this point. I think liberals are no different than their conservative counterparts. I think both 
sides are authoritarian assholes. And I don't fit with either one of those parties, and I don't fit with any of those political lines. So I see myself more of a libertarian because I do agree with true equality despite your race, despite your gender, despite your religion, what have you, that you should be hired and respected by the respect you give back and the job that you are required to do. All about personal liberty. Probably a libertarian with some left-leaning, you know, sympathies, I guess, but I must st- I think I, I, I am a firm libertarian, basically. I put personal liberty over um, national security any day. So, for those that wanted to know my whole political beliefs there, there you go. Aside from it, Ryu, will we see any of the surprise interests from the Rumble compete in ACW before Animedia 4? Um, never say never. They were kind of just one-time appearances for the Royale Rumble. They were surprise entrants, obviously, but, you know, I, except Ryu, because, you know, Ryu's actually an ACW superstar, but... Um, you never know. We could see it should go more than once or something like that again. Never say never. I won't deny or confirm that. Let's see. Will Ogilvy, I hope I said that right. Um, I think DCA would be a perfect fit for some of my calls. How can I contact DCA? Um, you can message them on their YouTube channel. Um, you can try to contact DWall on Facebook. He's the owner and uh, founder of DCA. You can contact me, and I can probably put a word out, possibly. I won't promise anything, but I can see what I can do on that regard. So those would be certain ways to um, contact DCA to see if you can have a uh, spot um, for uh, DCA. But I think DCA is full. I think I think DCA is full right now. I know DCA is going to start bringing in new talent, but, well, talent that I can't really tell you so far, but... Talent nonetheless, if I can put it that way. All right, let's see. More questions here. Um, Pedro Vicente said, Seth Rollins is injured now, and a new champion will be crowned. Would you want Roman to win or another person? I pretty much have stated this throughout this entire newscast, but Roman, yeah, Roman makes the most sense. And since we watched two brands, could... Excel versus Impulse happen. Again, never say never. It would just have to be the right time, right moment. Yada, yada. You, you, you get where I'm going with that. Um, how do you feel that Goku is back in ACW? Not a moment too soon. Holy crap. The JSA have... Like, their overbearing on Impulse has... Has become toxic. And for Goku to come back now, it's just... It's a bright light. It's a light full of a room of darkness. That's the best way I can describe that whole situation. And who do you want to see win the WWE Championship at Survivor Series? Roman Reigns, guys. I, I'm telling you guys. It feels like some of you guys just collaborate and, and just coordinate these questions sometimes. But yes, Roman Reigns should win the WWE World Heavyweight Championship at Survivor Series. I am a firm believer of that. I'm going to stop answering that question if it keeps coming up, by the way. Um, Aris Williams has a question. Do you think, and will some people who were surprised participants in the Rumble be a part of ACW? I just answered this, yes. Um, Again, never say never. It may happen, it may not happen. I can't confirm or deny that. It will depend on if I see it as a situation that I can fit them in. Um, Kiko Gun Cough, Gun, blah, blah, blah. Work your pig up in here. Hugo Goncalves asked two questions. Have you played WWE 2K16? No, I have not. And will Animania 4 have an Animania week just like what happened at Animania 3? Yes, it will. There will be more details about Animania 4 week as the week approaches. So, yes, there will be Animania 4 week. Uh, Toby Ontula had a question. Do you think Naruto Shippuden is better than the original Naruto? Um... Yeah, I guess it'll de- it, it, it depends on how you see it. You know, some people will argue that the that the the filler on Shippuden is a bit worse than Naruto in the original, but the reason why we choose Shippuden over the original is because I think the dark 
transition of the series fit well for the characters as they were going into their paths as to how they were able to um, truly find who they really are, specifically for Naruto and Sasuke. That's why I would choose Shippuden over the original. Um, and will there ever be an SCAW ACW Super Show in the future? Who knows? Like I said earlier, I wouldn't be opposed to it. I really wouldn't be opposed to a Super Show with SCAW. It would be a, uh, it'd be a, it would be kind of a holy shit mega event if you really think about it. So, Ben Hopkins is going to be my last person here tonight. He has some questions here. Do you watch any British wrestling promotions like ICW and This Is Progress? If so, what do you think of them? Um, I have not seen This Is Progress, but I have seen some things with the ICW, with uh, Noah Dar and you know David Mustaf and Drew Galloway, obviously, and people like that in the British wrestling scene. I think the British wrestling scene is uh, still young. It hasn't really caught on, you know, other than the United Kingdom, obviously, but. Um, you can tell that you can tell that they're hungry. You can tell that you know ICW and the and the whole scene there. There's a lot of great potential there. You know Kaylee Ray over there as well. So you know Nikki Storm who just got signed um, with the WWE. Um, so there's potential there. It's just it's the matter of of how much recognition re- recognition excuse me that some of these major wrestling promotions see in them, and if there is a reason, if there is a way to promote them as such, so, that'd be one thing, and obviously with Vince McMahon running WWE still, you know, there ain't gonna be no British world champion, because, you know, Vince is a xenophobe, otherwise British Bulldog and Wade Bear would have been world champion at this point, but that's neither here nor there, um, one more question. Ben Hopkins is one name on the lips of many call fans due to his work as a heel. He's seen in many companies like CXWY, OCBF, and soon to be LOH. Have you seen any of his work? If so, what do you think? Yeah, nice plug there, Ben. Nice plug. That was some great Mick Foley stuff there. But um I I have I have seen your work around, you know. It's it's you know, it's 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 good. I'm not gonna blow smoke up your ass and say it's the best thing ever, nor do you should expect me to say that if you want me to be real. But there is potential in what Ben Hopkins does. And all I will say is just to make sure fame doesn't get over your head and try to always improve. Even the best at the top are still trying to improve. Never stop improving, basically. <sighs> And with that said, that'll be it for the newscast. Man, an hour and 30. <laughs> oh, man, it's going to make these Animania shows feel not special anymore, but it is what it is. I think I will have one more newscast that I will do, and then I, will, and I won't do any more until the Animania for a week. So I believe I'll do one more newscast after this one, and then I will be done with the newscast until Animania for a week. Yeah. So... With that said, I am Hakeem Johnson telling all of you to stay cool. Stay cool. I'll see you guys when I see you guys. Later.